Okay, welcome. Today I'm going to talk about HOSS palette or Hoss palette and how to easily repalette a mono image. Uh, I've written a blog post about this on my website. I'll put a link in the description if you want to go check it out. So uh, Haas palette is an interesting palette. You can see here on the screen it's got lots of pinkish oranges and uh, generally the nebulous regions are of a darker color. So I, I find it to be very interesting. Now the stars in this image uh, are yellow and I don't know which palette that actually came from but it's not Haas palette. I put these in from a different palette combination. I just like the way it looked. I believe the stars are going to be blue uh, in Haas palette and we'll find out shortly. So let's start by uh, combining our data sets here to, to get the palette. Um, so the first thing we need to do uh, is stretch our data sets, or at least that's how I do it. So here's the uh, hydrogen signal, and the way I'm going to stretch these is using the screen transfer function auto stretch feature. I'm going to drag it over to the histogram transformation and then drag it to the image. And just do that for all three sets. the sulfur okay once that's finished we're gonna open pixel math and I have saved the equation in here now when you open this just make sure that you set it to create a new image here and uh, the color space needs to be RGB you need to deselect this uh, use a single RGB expression uh, that way you can control all three channels there so for the red channel, uh, I've got the hydrogen signal times 0.5 plus the oxygen signal times 0.5. Green channel is just the S2 signal and the B is the blue is uh, the same, sulfur. So uh, you need to have one of these images open in order for this to work. So let's apply it here. And there is our image. That's our Haas image. Um, so the one problem that occurs with this, um, I don't know if you'll have trouble with this or not, but uh, it's rather noisy. And the reason for that is because uh, it's doubled up on the sulfur signal, which in this case, my sulfur signal was the noisiest signal. I'm, I can't remember how much integration I had on this, but it doesn't matter. It's the noisiest one that I have so, uh, for this set. Uh, and also the hydrogen signal is only used in 50% of a channel, which normally it's used uh, in 100% you know, uh, especially in a show image or whatever. So I can continue editing this palette if I want to, as is. I'm just gonna have to apply more noise reduction or, or use different techniques to get rid of the extra noise. But there's another way to do it. Um, and that is to create a, a show edit. Now I've already done a show edit on this. That was the first, I think most of us go for the show edit first. That's why we take these three data sets. We always have show in mind. So this uh, Haas palette is just sort of a bonus. Uh, but we can use this show edit, uh, we can take the luminance from it and apply it to our Haas image. And that way the noise is reduced, we get better details because the hydrogen signal is uh, more present in the show image and the show luminance or, um, you know, so, so, so this is just, I don't want to call it a shortcut necessarily because you did do a full edit on this, uh, but it will make it easier to get rid of these, uh, this noise. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. The first thing I'm going to do is register these two together. And to do that, we need to go to image registration, star alignment, and uh, you s keep it on view here and you select, I already have it selected here, show edit, that's what I've called this file. Select OK. And then all we have to do from there is register it. And the reason I have to register it is because uh, I did crop it. I cropped the show edit to get rid of some of those rough edges. All right, so now it creates a new image uh, and it calls it registered. So I can go ahead and minimize the other ones. Um, now, one thing that we want, uh, want to do with this, you can leave the stars in for this if you really want to, but I always find it easier to edit these without the stars. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the stars uh, using star exterminator, which if you haven't checked it out, it's great. Uh, for the Haas image, I'll go ahead and tell it to generate a star image so that we can keep the stars. So let me go ahead and apply this. Okay, it is finished. 
and here is the separated star image. Uh, you can see this does have a lot of noise around it. Uh, and if you watched my last blog post, I showed you how to get rid of that. So, uh, but they are nice. They do have a nice blue-green tint to them. So uh, we'll, we'll keep that in case we want to use it later. Now here is the separated image. So that's just fine. We'll leave that as is. And then let's go ahead and remove the stars from the uh, edited show image. And I'll tell it to generate a star image on this as well in case we want to use pink stars. Who knows? Okay, now that process is finished. And you can see it left some nice magenta stars. I'm going to pull those over here. And we're left with a starless nebula image. Um, and so what we're going to need to do with this is extract the luminance. And you can do that in PixInsight up here at the top left corner. If I hover my mouse over this one, it says extract CIE luminance. I'm going to do that. All right, that's what we're after right there. So let me minimize that. Now we can open LRGB combination. And what we're going to do, a real simple trick here, is you can just grab this, drag it to the L. There we go. And then what you want to do is deselect the R, the G, and the B. We don't need that. And I like to do the chrominance noise reduction. Now, let's open up our registered image. We don't want, we don't want the old one. We want the registered image, starless image here. And uh, we're just simply going to apply this uh, to the Haas uh, image here. And let's, it's going to uh, put the luminous channel in there. Okay, so here is our initial result. Now, it, obviously it's not very saturated. Uh, that's because it uh, was brightened a lot by that luminance channel. The luminance channel was much brighter than the one it had. Um, so what we can do is open up our curves process here and uh, add some color and some saturation. So let's, let's push this a little bit. And it might be a little, a little too bright, so I'm going to bring it down just a hair. Okay, let's, let's just apply that and take a look. Uh, one of the things that happens when you apply the LRGB combination tool to these, when you apply a luminous channel, is if you zoom in, you might see some color noise, which I do see a little bit of color noise here. It's not much, uh, but it's real easy to zap that away. Like we'll look at this little block here and make a preview. I don't know if you can see that on your screens or not. Um, but there's a little bit of chrominance noise there, and the easy way to get rid of that is with the ACDNR process. And uh, I'll just default it. I'm going to deselect the Apply Lightness button. I only want to focus on chrominance. If we apply it to the lightness, that's going to uh, apply noise reduction, and we don't want that. We just want chrominance noise reduction. So let's see uh, what this does. I'm going to hit the Preview button here and flip it in and out. And you can see it gets rid of that noise, that uh, chrominance noise. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that to the image. One thing you want to be careful of is if, if you apply it this way, you just want to make sure it's not also uh, getting rid of some of your color contrast. So let's apply it to the image and take a closer look here. All right, looks like it's done a good job of getting rid of the chrominance noise. Um, if I undo it, I'm not seeing any big changes in color contrast. So that means it's done a pretty good job. All right, so from here, uh, this is where you would uh, maybe open up curves again and play around with some of the colors, saturation, and, and get it to the point uh, where you like it. Um, you know, this is where you get to be an artist. So uh, I don't know, this is, there's some interesting things you can do here, like push the red channel a little bit, to bring the reds in. Pull some greens out, maybe, so it's a little more blue. Anyways, you get the idea. Uh, so I'll probably finish a quick edit of this, and I'll post it up in the video at the end, uh, and also onto the blog post. But that's pretty much it. Um, so you can this you can easily go between palettes like this if you have your LRGB combination tool, 
uh, process uh, sort of saved there. Um, feel free to open Pixel Math back up, choose a different palette, uh, try several different ones, and then just uh, apply this to the result. Of course, you have to um, register it with the proper image, and then you have to remove the stars. But it's a, it's a pretty quick way to just kind of experiment with different palettes until you find one you, you really like. Uh, so that's it. I hope you uh, enjoyed this presentation, and I hope some of you come up with some very good Haas images. I, I'd love to see them. Thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you next time.